This lesson introduces two new facilities of the script language. One is the multi-way branching facility implemented as the case statement and the other is the exit command. Exit is used whenever you want your script to return a completion code. A completion code, sometimes called a condition code or a status code, is most useful when you're going to be executing one script from inside a program or inside another script. Actually, every script returns a condition code, it's just that when you use the exit keyword, you get to specify its value. If you don't specify an exit code value, the code from the last command you execute in your script is the one that's returned. You can test the exit code from almost any command by using the if statement. For example, this script uses the grep command to check for a name being in the password file and reports whether or not it finds it. Notice that the grep command is used in place of test. You can use any command in the if statement, but if you decide to do it this way, make sure you test it once before you try to use it because there are some inconsistencies here and there with commands. Almost all the commands will return true and false correctly, but there are exceptions, so do be careful. Now here's the script in action. And here is that same script again with a couple of changes. Notice the special syntax used to redirect the output from grep. The ampersand 1 in the redirection of standard error means that any output to standard error should be sent to the same place as the output to standard out. And since standard out is redirected to the bit bucket, that's where it all will go. Also, exit codes have been added. If the name is found in the password file, the exit value is 0. If it's not found, the exit value of 1 is used to represent false. Now, this may sound backwards to you. The value of 0 is true, and any other value is taken to be false. It's done that way so that exit can return a condition code that indicates a kind of error that occurred. There's only one code for success, but there may be dozens of codes to indicate the different ways to have a failure. That's why 0 was picked as the success number. Okay, now here is a script that implements a multi-way branch. The case statement takes any expression that results in a string. In this example, the expression is the first argument on the command line. The string is then compared one by one against the values listed for it. When a match is found, the statements following that match but coming before the double semicolon are all executed. If it gets all the way to the bottom without a match, nothing is executed. The matching is done with that regular expression thing again. In this example, the last one in the list is an asterisk, so it will match anything. Here are some examples of what happens when you run this script. Notice that the name yellow was not in the list, so it went to the default with the asterisk as the regular expression. Here's another version of the script with some regular expressions and some selections having more than one match. The first selection in this list is the color gray, which you can spell with either an A or an E. The name red can be written in all lower case, mixed case, or in all upper case. Blue can be in English or in Spanish. Green can be specified as any word beginning with GR except the word gray, which will always be caught by the match up at the top. And the last selection in the list is the wildcard again, which will match anything that's not matched by the others. 
Okay, that's about it for the fundamentals of shell scripts. There is a lot more, but I think I've covered all the big mysteries. I do want to show you some things about aliases and functions because you're likely to run into both of them with a new installation of Linux, and I'll do that in the next lesson.